Hey guys, Michael from Nocturnal Simulations here, and I hope you enjoyed the opening scenes. I've had a few questions from people within my virtual airline and some of my friends about the settings I use within Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I wanted to share those settings with you. Just as a heads up, I do run some higher end equipment which I've linked below if you're interested in seeing what I have. To start, in my opinion, the CPU plays the biggest factor in having high performance and a stutter-free experience within Microsoft Flight Simulator. I have, as the creation of this video, the latest Intel i9-13900K processor. The overall speeds from the processor cores gives Microsoft Flight Simulator the horsepower it needs to run, and the economy cores allow me to run a lot of different software in the background, be it Volanta, smart cars for your virtual airline tracking, Navigraph, or others. Next up, I have the NVIDIA EVGA 3080 Ti. While this isn't the latest card, it still performs exceptionally well, and outside of EVGA exiting the GPU market, with NVIDIA, I'd highly recommend getting your hands on one, or at least an equivalent. As for RAM, I have 128GB of Corsair 5200MHz DDR5. This is definitely overkill for Microsoft Flight Simulator, as I never use every bit of it. The main reason I installed that much is because I utilize it for work tasks at my day job. That's the main players in my setup, and as I mentioned before, if you're interested in knowing exactly what I have for all of my components, I have linked the entire machine specifications down below. Next up, we'll dive into my settings within the game itself. As you can see here, my display mode is in full screen, and I'm running 1440p resolution. Anti-aliasing is TAA instead of DLSS, despite having a card capable of running it, simply because the instruments inside of the cockpit of like the Phoenix, for example, gets blurry along with the PMDG, which are two of the more common planes that I fly. Render scaling is 100% of the resolution that works for me. I know that if you're running 1080, for example, that puts more of a load on your CPU and you can actually bump that up to 110 or 120% to offload a little bit to your GPU. Sharpening is 200%. Not entirely sure if that hurts me any. I haven't seen any decrease on my end, but uh, might as well run it at 200 if I have it. V-Sync is on. Video reflex low latency is on. Frame rate limit is 100% my monitor refresh rate, and I have 144 hertz 32 inch monitors. DirectX version is DirectX 11, as there's no visual improvement and not much of a performance boost, if any, and more than likely a degradation in performance with DirectX 12. Next up we have the advanced settings. A couple items I'd like to touch on first are the terrain level of detail and optic level of detail. These two settings are really going to be the most dramatic in terms of performance adjusting within Microsoft Flight Simulator because these two hit your CPU the heaviest, and I found that by lowering these, if, a, if you have a lower end processor, you can get away with running ultra settings or high settings on some other items that you're interested in seeing while still maintaining a pretty decent frame rate. Luckily with the i9, you can push these pretty high and still have good results. As you can see, everything else is pretty much ultra, which that offloads a lot of the load onto the GPU. And the anisotropic filtering and texture super sampling are 16 by 8 by 8. Moving on down the list, we've got water weights on high. You can push this to ultra if you want to, but it, it's a pretty good hit on your GPU. Yeah, but if you're flying around the Bahamas, for example, you might want to push this up to high just for that because there's not a ton of buildings around there, so you have a little bit more overhead on your hardware. Shadow maps and terrain shadows are 2048. Ultra for the next three. Cube map reflections are 256. Ray marched reflections, ultra. Light shafts, ultra. Blooms on. Depth of field is ultra. Motion blur is off because I don't want to see that. I can make my own blur. Lens color correction is off, and the main reason that is off is so that when you're in the cockpit of, a, as an example, the A320 from Phoenix, they can be a little further off from where the actual button is, so it's shifted on your screen, so it can feel like you're not actually clicking on the switch or the button, 
to actually actuate it, which can be kind of frustrating. And next up we got lens flare, which I leave on to emulate using an actual camera and glass cockpit refresh rate set to medium. This works for me. I know it can be a, a big hit to your CPU if you push that on high, especially with these glass cockpits that have more than one screen or two screens even, you know, some of them got four or five, six, even more. So if you want to have a higher refresh rate, go for it, but it definitely affects the overall performance of the sim. With that guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe even learned something. Please consider liking and subscribing as it will help me grow this channel. If you have any questions, please comment below and feel free to offer some suggestions to further optimize Microsoft Flight Simulator settings and enjoy these closing scenes. I also hope that if you catch me in a live stream that you hop in there and say hello.